Welcome to Admore Markets. Glad that I see so many familiar faces here, or names I should say, in fact. Uh, we're going to take a look at when chasing the forex mar market goes wrong. I think it's going to be a very useful topic for you because I think this is one of the key things that traders bump into and uh, I think it's going to be a, a lovely webinar. But uh, before we do that, as always, the risk disclaimer, of course, explaining that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk. It may not be suitable for all investors. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. And this webinar and video is for educational purposes only. So we thank you for your attention on that. And uh, with we, I mean Chris, myself, Tarantala, but also our special guest, Michal, who's going to say something very interesting about a boot camp. So that's going to be very interesting. Hang on for that. But after that, we are going to continue with the chasing the forex market. Hello, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody. Good evening, Chris. Good evening, Toronto. Very nice to see you all again. I see that I have finally made, made it to the uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation of Chris's as a special guest. Thank you very much. It's a huge honor for me. I am going to talk about something very interesting today. It's going to be, uh, we're going to have a nice conversation about Admiral Markets Traders Camp. Traders Camp. So whoever of you have heard about it already or have already signed up, because there's a lot of people who already uh, got enrolled into the camping program for next week, you can all go make yourself a cup of tea or maybe watch a funny video on YouTube for the next five minutes. For the rest of you, you are very lucky because today is going to be our last webinar session before next Monday when we're going to officially launch our new traders camp. So allow me to speak about it for the last time. Uh, my name is always is, uh, Mikhail Onohov. You can always Google my name to find me on LinkedIn and add me as a connection. I would cherish such an opportunity. You can always write me an email to mlwmarkets.com and you can always find me on Skype. I know the name is a little bit difficult, but there is a good site to it as well. After all, I'm the only Mikhail Onohov in the world. Very easy to find me on Google. Uh, today I'm going to speak to you about Traders Camp, but before that, the main idea that stands behind the Traders Camp is a thing called motivation. And it has always been my understanding that a person who wants to become a successful trader should approach Forex not only from an analytical or technical perspective, but should also pay attention to a psychic and motivational side of trading activities. In one of my previous uh, webinars, I've spoken about success. Uh, it is scientifically proven that your success in trading and in life depends not only on your intellectual capabilities, not on your IQ, but much rather on your ability to motivate yourself to do the right thing day in and day out, year after year. Of course, achieving such motivation is a lot easier said than done. In recent times, there have been a number of books and trainings that claim to help you achieve your long-term goals by motivating yourself through visualization or self-affirmation, that kind of thing. Unfortunately, a number of experiments have shown that none of those techniques actually work. I'm pretty sure that all of you would agree with me. It's very easy just to sit in the dark and repeat to yourself, I'll be a successful trader, I'll be a successful trader 25 times. 500 times a day. Unfortunately, this sort of a technique will not work and will not allow you to achieve success in trading or anything else for this matter. What I would like to talk to you about though is a technique that is extremely useful and is proven to help people stay focused and motivated towards their long-term goals. I'm confident you will be able to use it not only to become a successful trader, but will also help you in all aspects of your life. So if idea sounds good, I will I'll talk about it further. And I'm basing my presentation on the work of Professor Richard Wiseman. I think the third name speaks to itself. He is quite a wise man. So before we start, let's do a quick interactive test. Before you, you can see the most popular motivation techniques that are used by a lot of people worldwide. Those techniques are the most popular one uh, in the world, but unfortunately, half of them do, does not work. So out of all those techniques, only three have scientific grounds that prove that they're successful. So let's go uh, through them one by one. If you want to motivate yourself towards a long-term objective, such as forex trading or uh, career change or dropping weight or quitting smoking, 
you can use three of those techniques and become successful. So you can make a perfect plan, you can motivate yourself by focusing on somebody you admire, you can tell other people about your goals, you can think about the, the bad things that will happen to you if you fail, you can try to suppress negative thoughts, you can rely on your willpower, and you can record your progress. Now, I want every one of you to think, what techniques would you use? I'll give you a small hint, only three out of those techniques are actually successful. I hope you all thought about it. Let's see the answers. And the answers are that make a perfect plan, tell the people about your goals, and record your progress. Those are techniques that are scientifically proven in experiment form to actually give you an advantage. So let's go through those techniques one by one. First of all, you must have a perfect plan. Nobody just kind of casually walks around and then finds themselves on the top of Mount Everest. It never happens. You must have a plan. You have to break down your long-term goals into a number of short-term goals. A step-by-step -step process helps to eliminate fear and hesitation that is often associated with trying to achieve a major life challenge. Remember, those goals must be concrete, measurable, and time-based. Think about a uh, number of people who are looking for a new job. An organized person, a person with a plan, will know exactly what he has to do at every single point of time. He will know that in the first week he has to rewrite his CV, and then he has to send out five or four job applications every week for the next six months. This is called a plan. He broke down a long-term objective to find a new job into a series of small objectives, such as rewriting CVs and sending them out to his potential employers. This is a good system. Number two, tell the people about your plans. Now this is a tricky one and a lot, a lot of people don't like sharing their plans with other people because, well, you might look a bit foolish if you fail, but if you tell other people about your plan, it, you, you will find it a lot harder to dodge your responsibilities. Plus, your family, your friends, they will offer you all kinds of support when you need it. So make sure to go pl public with your plans. Number three, record your progress. Now this one is very important because all of us have a huge aim and a huge goal in front of us. All we want is to become excessively filthy rich with forex money. Now you don't, you don't, uh, you cannot count on becoming a forex millionaire in a week. It might actually take you know a month or two uh, sometimes. So it might take. Uh, might take you some time, yes, but not being able to achieve your goal does not mean you're not getting closer or moving to the right direction. Uh, this is the technique that bodybuilders use all the time. All of them want to become like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but it's not going to happen very quickly. So they have a tracking list and they record the amount of weights they've been able to lift. And over time, even though they don't see that that much difference have happened to them, they see that the amount of weights they're able to lift is rising constantly. And this is something that helps them to motivate themselves to continue. They see that they're moving into the right direction. So, by now, you're probably asking yourself, why I decided to tell you those three techniques? I'll tell you why. Because from this Monday, the 7th of October, we are starting a new program. It's going to be called Trading Camp. And in the Trading Camp, we will incorporate all those three techniques to help you achieve your long-term goal of becoming a successful forex trader. We will give you a plan, which is going to be uh, a few small assignments every day. You do small assignments every day, and this way you're moving towards your long-term goal. Secondly, you will get a special tracking system. Now, uh, allow me to see if I can actually show you them. Uh, look at this. This is what I'm talking about. This is a spreadsheet that everybody will be given. Now, one of our traders have already filled it up, look at this, and we receive a graph with your profits, yes? Uh, in our system, you will be given three different strategies, look at this. You will be able to visualize which strategy works best for you. Uh, this way, you will be able to track your progress week after week, day after day, to see if you are actually getting better. So, what you want to see is all those lines constantly going up, and that should happen to you in week number four. Also, you will have help from a professional, uh, professional 
sports coach who will be able to talk to you, listen to your problems, offer you some solutions. This counts as telling other people about your goals. This person will not allow you to quit on your long-term objective. So, if you're thinking about uh, participating, I suggest you drop us a line at camp at admiralmarkets.com. Uh, you, have, you have a whole new day in front of you Friday to write, uh, to write us a letter. What you have to do is you have to describe a person you want to become in one year using Forex. So you want to describe a, just describe a trader or you want to describe the changes you hope will happen in your life once you become successful in Forex trading and send it to camp at admiralmarkets.com. You will then be required to open a demo account for the purpose of the uh, trading program and a real account with ten dollars in it, uh, you require it in your week number four when you start trading on a real account. So, once again, this is a brand new thing we're starting. Uh, I, I don't want to say revolutionary, but it is kind of revolutionary. So, make sure you check it out. All you have to do, write us to campagromarket.com and uh, We'll, handle, we'll take it from, from, from there. The program starts on uh, the 7th of October and will last for three weeks. Three weeks and you will be a better trader than you are today. That's guaranteed because we will not let you quit. So once again, write us an email or you can always find me on LinkedIn or on uh, Skype or send me an email with a question. I'll be more than happy to answer it. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope to hear a lot from all of you. And I will now pass the microphone to Chris and Tarantula, who will take on with this webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'll see you all on Monday. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you so much, Michal. I think everyone is looking forward to starting on Monday and can't wait for the weekend to, to be over. All right. So in that case, I'm just, just waiting. Um, the PowerPoint that I can share with you, which is not possible at the moment, and now it is. Alrighty, there we are. So we're going to take a look at chasing the market and uh, what that means for you and for us as all fork traders. Avoiding this big mistake alone could cost and save a lot of equity and return of equity. All right, so this is definitely one of those things that can help improve the path of uh, your results. And uh, so I think it's, it's definitely going to be worth your time. So we're going to start with what is chasing the market, first of all. Then we're going to take a look at why is it a mistake and what are the common mistakes. We're going to take a look why traders are trading this way and what are the consequences of that and what can be done to prevent this. So first, Talanta will go through a few reasons what is chasing the market, first of all. Yeah, this, uh, thank you for such a nice introduction. So guys, uh, usually this happens from time to time, I think for all of traders, who even those who trade professionally, sometimes it happens that they chase the market just influenced by a psychology of the market and of, of, and of the personal psychology. So you need always to, to do the opposite of chasing the market. So the first thing is to know what does it mean, what, what it means chasing the market. Chasing the market is the simplest form. Entering too late on the trend has already been established. That means that you, let's say that you, you usually trade London session, right? Okay, I think that my voice has now been improved. Thank you very much for, for suggesting. Uh, I think that you can hear me. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Yes, so, definitely better. Excellent. Uh, so, the thing is <clears throat> that we all, well, well, it happens, as I said uh, five minutes, uh, two minutes ago, that we, from time to time, we all chase the market. Why? It's just, it depends on our psychology. If we get up late, for example, let's say that we want to trade London market, but we have woken up around the uh, 11 o'clock. And what happens is that, the, well, the trend has already been established. We usually have some 30-40% of daily average to range, and then what we do is we open the trade randomly in the trend direction. Well, that is, we want to chase the market. The market has already gone away, 
but we have entered too late and the trend has already been established. That would usually mean that we enter longs always at the tops. Now that, that, uh, that is different from breakout trading because breakout trading has some uh, distinctive uh, and uh, characteristic uh, probabilities. But chasing the market doesn't have. If we have entered too long in the market, that uh, usually what will happen is the market will retrace, uh, hit our stop loss, or we will close it uh, by psychology, uh, psychological stop loss, and then afterwards it will reverse at the same direction we originally want it to be. So that is usually the thing when because we are afraid that we will miss some trades. So entering longs always at the tops, entering shorts always at the bottoms. That is not a breakout trading. That is chasing the market. Uh, chasing the market it it can refer so to both the entering into highly priced positions after they have they have rapidly increased and become overvalued, and uh, it's also uh, entering the short positions after they have rapidly decreased and become uh, undervalued. So we just sometimes we can't help ourselves entering trades, even though we know fully well that the trade is not the best trade we could enter. Uh, many traders have the, that weakness in their trading. And it's just a matter of time before those traders take a serious hit to their account. Right? So it's also revenge trading. I will talk I will tell about it a little bit later. It's a, also revenge trading. It doesn't have to be revenge trading. But if we get a serious hit at our position and the market reverses in the originally intended position, we will go with revenge trade. I will show the example later. It's also called chasing the shadow because if you stand still, your shadow will come to you. But if you want to chase the shadow, you will never get it because the shadow will always run away from you. That is the same thing with the market. Even though you're right, let's say today, let's say that today for example you have traded euro dollar and you have maybe woken up at the time when the price was uh, around 36.25. It was just prior to London Open. What would it, what, what would mean chasing the market. It would mean that you longed around 36.20 just because you were afraid that you won't make a profit, that you will, that you will maybe uh, lose a day because you saw that price, that the top has been broken, everything was set up, but what, was, what happened is that the trend suddenly reversed. Uh, mistake, sorry, the trend has remained the same but it was the retracement and you didn't trade into the retracement you did trade at the top at the very top and what would happen is you would surely lose the trade because the price went down 50 pips especially if you were over lever leveraged maybe then you would close your price after 10 pips of loss of a loss but afterwards the market continued in the same or original direction and you would enter again at the very top. Then the market went to 30, 60, 20 be, before hitting 36 again. Now you would chase it to the downside. You would close your trade around 36.10 or 36.5 and enter a short position. But what would happen later is that the price went to 36.40. So that is called chasing the market. Simultaneously opening positions which are very wrong. I will I will answer your questions later. Just about this PowerPoint document, all webinar uh, is being uh, recorded. So not don't worry. You can you can uh, watch this later. It it will be uploaded. Don't worry. So uh, I am sure that 90 percent or maybe 100 percent of you, all of you who are attending the webinar, 
including me and Chris, at least did this once. I'm not saying that you do that always, but at least you do that once, right? Because, you know, when you're making profits and when you trade and when you make uh, big, big profits, then it, it trading gets into your head. And you think, well, what happens? My trading strategy is good. And I will, I will surely win, win this trade. And then we make mistakes. We, di we don't count that retracement will be maybe deeper than it should be. And that is why I always teach when I do a private mentorship also and all sort of other things and courses. I always say, wait for retracement if you don't want to trade breakouts. If you want to trade breakouts, you need to know when and why you trade breakouts. But if you want to, to trade um, like a well, professional trader, wait for retracement. I know that psychologically it's, very, it's a very uh, difficult because if you see that the price is going up, you will think that the price won't come down. And then you think this day is lost. We, 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 we cannot have a good trade, I will enter, what happens, let it happen, what will happen. So, we don't do it that way. We need the, to wait for retracement. Or we need to short at the tops if, we, if it's the first trade, or long at the bottoms. I am talking about the very first trade of the day. Usually, at the start of a London session, if the price has gone too, too much in one direction, for example, today, 36.25, or two days ago, 35.80, 80, I think it was, 35.85. Usually what, what, what needs to be done is wait for retracement or trade short. Because risk to reward is, is much better. Don't enter into highly priced position after they have rapidly increased. Don't do that. All bully candles, if you remember our webinar, all bully candles needs to have retracements. Also, all short candles, big short candles, especially if they're on higher time frame, need to have retracements. Don't go blindly. Don't follow the trend blindly. Wait for retracements. Chris, I think that you agree with me perfectly, right? Absolutely. I was already talking, but I didn't realize my, my, my mic was actually on mute. <laughs> that, uh, I wanted to say that, in fact, we have usually kind of a range what we could expect within a day of movement. And if, it, if, if a currency moves impulsively an X amount of pips, then the whole reward to risk is just getting diminishing. Um, and at certain spots, it makes sense if we can expect a it's still a pretty good breakout move up, but otherwise uh, retracements and jumping basically into an ongoing move is like trying to hop on a train. I always use that as an example. I'll, I'll talk about that maybe more. Or can I use it now? Maybe just quickly. It's just like if you're on a train, waiting for a train at the train station, and you see something passing by with 200 kilometers an hour, it's difficult to jump on. Let's face it, only a few stuntmen can do that. And uh, usually we wait for the train to, to go back. This, an acceptable speed. That's basically the same when you're uh, trying to jump in a move that's going very fast. Just picture yourself trying to jump on a train. And you can imagine what you're in fact trying to do. Something very difficult because uh, there's a high chance that that train is going to stop all of a sudden and you'll be stuck at the top of that trade. Indeed. So um, very psychologically very tempting but dangerous indeed. Absolutely. So sorry there for cutting in there to that. No, no, no problem. I just wanted your opinion. So that is, we can move on to our next slide. And I just want yep. to say that uh, guys always, always pay attention to those early breakouts. Always pay attention to a London breakout. Always pay attention to New York Open. Don't rush into a trade. It's okay. So from time to time, you can have a nice amount of pips. But what if, if range happens? As you know, 
Uh, Eighty percent of traders lose money when there is a range-bound market. Why? Even though if your trade is is uh, is going into the right direction, not closing it when the market's market is ranging will cost you your profit. At least you will suffer from a break-even trade or a single loss. So especially don't chase the market when the market is ranging. That will surely, 100%, will be a loss. Yep. And I will tell you later, after Chris finishes with his presentation, I will tell you what does it mean and how you can make a very poor risk to reward ratio, ratios with those kind of things. And that is why I don't support Martingale strategies. Thank you, yep. Chris, very much. No, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, well, this is just basically it's my version of it, which is very similar to Tarantala uh, had. But uh, it's just yeah, it's forex traders in need of a trade. It's something that uh, is trying to soothe the own uh, psychology. You know, there's something wrong. It's kind of the maybe the the mental idea with some people who chase the market, and uh, it's more the thinking like, oh, I need a trade now. I need it right here, right now. Right. Once in the trade, though, the opposite happens. The of course the candles, you know, start to, to move up and down, and the trader often gets nervous. And that's logical because the whole basis of the trade, the whole trade idea, isn't solidly grounded and, and planned. Therefore, any movement will make the trader nervous, and in that case, that particular trader wants to get out of that trade as fast as possible, which is kind of ironic because a while ago the trader wanted to get in as fast as possible. So there's no reflection of any strategy or hardly any strategy, market structure, uh, psychology, the validity or correctness of the setup. It's just pure or in most cases that a lot of it has to do with the fact that the price is just moving right here right now and pips, money can be made. That's a lot of times the, the reasoning behind taking the trade which of course is not has no validity. Alrighty, so once again, the most important is for right here at the bottom, market conditions to meet our trading plan. Right? Now, why does this happen? We got we'll talk about solutions actually more more later on. So that's just a a, a first dive, first comment on that. Um, why does this happen and when does it happen? Now, not only maybe when the market is moving fast, we already talked about that a lot. In fact, that we have big impulsive candles, definitely appealing. Market is moving. It's always tempting to actually take and try to take a part of that market action when it is moving. And um, traders basically jump in and don't expect or think a retracement could happen, right? And if it does, it causes a lot of fear and doubt. But also maybe when the market is moving very slow, um, a trader could be trying to trade a breakout at the wrong time and place. For example, trying to trade a breakout on the euro dollar in the Asian session would not be the advisable strategy. And uh, that's in a way also trying to chase the market at a, at a totally insufficient plan and time, right? It doesn't match. Or if a trader is not aware of a range, and overtrades that range, and for example, see the move up, enters here, close the trade. When we don't, when we don't see any follow through at the bottom, then enters a short, sees the price maybe move a bit, but then move up again, closes the short right in here, enters a long again. Obviously, this trader is not having the patience, and is just jumping around, entering both sides, hoping for some type of movement, whatever the movement is, and in fact, there's no movement because it's bouncing up and down, right? So that can happen too when the market is moving too slow. A trader could also be chasing this kind of market. Alrighty, let's move on. Oh, wait, sorry, here's still a uh, screenshot, apparently. Here, your odd 30-minute chart I made. And um, what does this say? Well, it's what I, what I did it for was basically, what you'll often see on this, this is a 30-minute chart, Let's take a look at these boxes. The black one is 
when the currency is moving. So what you'll see is, okay, the currency is moving. Let's jump in here, right, at the black box. And then the currency just goes boom, flat, right? Because it's always making short impulses, relatively shorter impulses, longer consolidations. So if a trader jumps at the end of the impulse, what they often bump into is either retracement or at least a longer period of time of sideways consolidation. And the trader doesn't know what's happening. Why is it not continuing? It's just going flat, exits, it, exits the trade, and then sees it maybe an hour or two or whatever. Uh, later on, to maybe continue with the original idea, then says to his best friend, you see, I was right, but it happened after I closed the trade, right? So that, that's often the reason why, right? And here goes into consolidation, right? Goes into consolidation, etc. The purple one is the opposite. I was trying to give an example where the market is maybe just chopping around, especially maybe this one in the middle, okay? So you can see that no movement and any entry orders in the middle would, uh, yeah, not be too good already or even uh, even on both sides, in fact, if you think about it. So let's move on to the mistakes, the common mistakes. Yeah, the very common mistakes of chasing the market are, as I already told you, those are late entries, over leveraging, bad risk management, chasing the losses, abandoning your own money management, revenge trading, and trading outside the zone. Now, what that, does it mean? Late entries are all entries which are not correctly and technically based, and they don't have anything in common with breakout trading. The longing after the price has reached 100% of its, or 90% of its ATR is uh, very bad thing. Over leveraging, if you open a trade, especially if the trade is the very first trade of the day, and you didn't have the patience to wait for retracement, you want to jump into, train, to, to, into a trend to run for the market, you would usually do that with over leveraging. That means that your equity or your profits are soon to get burned. Bad risk management also means that you don't do well and you don't do fine with your basic and original market plan. That means that you will usually risk more than 2 to 3 percent in a single trade and that can lead to a loss of 9 of 20 or 30 percent of overall, overall account size. Also, it's called chasing the losses. What does it mean? Chasing the losses usually means that, let's say that you are a trader and you have a goal to win $100 per day. In your very first trade, if you lose entire $100, you will usually put in another order and risk $200, right? That way, if the trade becomes successful, you would have made your money back you just lost and still won the $100 you were looking to achieve. But what would happen, for example, if you lost that second trade? Then you would have to risk 400 If the trade wins, you would have made your 300s in losses and still have 100 gold in for that profit for the day. But let's say <laughs> there is also a bad risk to reward because you you risk uh, three hundred dollars, four hundred, and you all, you just made a hundred dollar profit because you you just made back that what you lost. And then what if you lose, for example, yet another trade that can happen in ranging markets, and that happens from time to time. Now then you need eight hundred dollars. And now your $800 would be at stake to just obtain $100 in profit. 
And that means there is very, very bad money management. That means that you are chasing your losses. Now you don't chase your market, you are chasing your losses. And you have abandoned, abandoned your money management. That means that you do revenge trades. That means that you are buying at, a, uh, at the resistance, uh, shorting into supports, never respecting the breakouts or levels. And you just trade outside the zone. You don't trade in the zone, in that average true range zone. You are trading outside of it. And that will, that will usually mean that if you are trade, if you, if you make, I can need to say stupid trades, you will lose. You need to calm down. You need to let down. You need just to let down, to calm down. And you're, you need to put your emotional side to a sleep. Trading should never get, uh, should never involve emotions. Uh, however, it happens. I know from time to time, especially if you are very euphoric. But that is a very big mistake, because then uh, you will not chase your the market. This is the crucial sentence. You will chase your losses. You just would you you will work not to make the profits. You will work for for breaking even. You want just to 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 make the money back that you you just lost. So you want to make the, your money back. You don't want to make any profits. And usually, what will happen? You will get many break-even trades, but eventually your your account will gradually will gradually go down. That is very 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 bad thing to do. So, you always need to perfect your strategy and then make money. You need to select your trading strategy, let's say price action trading. Then after, if you, if, you, if you have selected it correctly, you need to go about perfecting your strategy. You, if you make 20 or 30 trades per day, that again means that you, that you are chasing your losses. If you make five, six, ten days per day uh, trades per day, that means that maybe you are chasing the market. But just ask yourself: Will the market give you six, seven perfect entries for that day? Usually, it won't. It will give you in very strong trends. Then you can have six or seven good trades per day in a row. But usually, that will not happen. Because market will just not give you six or seven perfect or very good trades for that day. That is why I always say, if you have made some profits, and you have made it by the end of the trading session, now let's say now it's uh, the end of trading sessions, 6.40 p.m. Central European Standard Time. Don't trade, because usually what will happen, the market will range, and the new trend will begin usually after the Frankfurt closes and London opens. Or at least there will be some retracement. So if you wait for retracement, you will trade in the zone. There is a very good book Mark Douglas wrote, Trading in the Zone. You can read it. Try to Google for it. Trading in the zone. So but if you if you don't respect trading hours, if you don't respect average true range, if you always go for longing into resistance, chasing the market, chasing losses, you are trading outside the zone. The zone can be either technical or psychological. If technical aspect is good, but your psychological aspect is bad, then you need to work on yourself. Vice versa is if your psychological aspect is good, but your trading is bad, then you need to get back to trade in this zone and you will be fine if you have 70% of hit win success ratio you will be good and that means that you will never chase the market let alone the losses yeah good stuff thank you Chris well, that is also from my experience. We all had some mistakes during our trading career, 
and we need to assure that those mistakes never happen. So this is all from, from my experience as a trader. Because I, I know what my mistakes were and I wrote down on a sheet of paper my, uh, my mistakes and I read it 10 times per day until I learned to control it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it, to me, it's I just have probably at the moment the reverse attitude when I see price action. It's if I see a certain type of consolidation, and I don't want to, you know, trade a super big necessarily range up and down. As you know, I'm not a range trader. I'm, a, I'm a, with the trend trader. But what I definitely don't want to do, even if there is a trend, is to jump in an ongoing impulse. Indeed, and that that's something I really get very leery of that and would definitely be not looking actually to trade it and I'm more looking for a smaller consolidation zone where I know that the market has come to an ease and has calmed down a bit the uh, the waters of the the ocean have settled a bit so it's easier to um, to row a boat on that instead of uh, when uh, when the waves are very high and the the currency is moving like crazy so then I actually get Definitely not interested in that. Well, if it's calmer, especially the little zone, maybe on a one-hour chart with a couple of uh, like a bull flag or even a 50-minute bull flag, then everything is easier to plan and trade. Yeah, the problems are ranging markets. When markets are heavily ranged, like, like, let's say uh, not these two, three days, but last two or three weeks. 3470 30, 30, on euro to 3570. The problem is you cannot get into a trend because even if you make a good valid position, let's say that you are longing uh, 3500 with, uh, I don't know, 20, 25 pip stop losses. Uh, it can happen uh, multiple times that your stop will get hit uh, prior to a good trend trade such as 100 pips in a long direction. That can happen when markets are ranging. And that is very nasty thing, especially when retracements are deeper. Then you, you just think the trend has changed, but uh, it has changed in lower time frame, but higher time frame is still intact. And that can happen uh, from time to time. You, that's why you all need to learn to, to trade with low leverage. So even if you lose, even if you lose a trade, it doesn't matter because you 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 are lowly leverage, so it doesn't matter if you lose 50 pips with 0 0.20 or on, on 10k account. It's it's not a big loss, right? So sometimes when you spot the range, go with with lower leverage. Uh, the the worst thing to do is to highly leverage yourself into a ranging market. That is 100% a loss. Absolutely. And a lot of it has to do with trading psychology, in fact. And we've had a webinar on psychology partly. And this is, in a way, a bit of a continuation because all these things are derived from our emotions. The reason why we do this is has a lot to do with that trading psychology. And one of the reasons maybe that we actually do jump in a trade, in a way, and try to chase the market is, for example, regretting missing those pips. If you ever think about when looking at the market and think, oh, I wish I had made those pips, then that's a red flag. And you definitely want to seriously try to get rid of those thoughts because those thoughts are the driver of our behavior or potential behavior. And that could definitely seriously uh, affect that. I mean, if you're thinking that, there, and you, for a moment, have just a moment of weakness, and you can't control, you know, that, that thought process. You might be chasing the market when you when you jump in, in a trade, right? Or how about if you analyzed a setup correctly, and you just didn't pull the trigger at that point in time when maybe your plan said you should, and then you actually later on jump in the trade anyhow, even though you know, the entry already is past you, then you're trying to compensate that good analysis with a bad entry, right? Or a, not a correct entry at least. Not where you're supposed to be taking it. And it just has 
to do with the fact that you're looking at the market and saying, oh, I was right, I could have had those pips, right? And all those thoughts, those internal thoughts are creating emotions within you. So that's one of the reasons, emotions very strong. And uh, personally, when I look at the market, it's, it's purely business, right? I'm not even looking at, if, if, if you try to look at how many pips have been made or how, many have, how much has moved, I've done it in the past, and it's tempting to, to look at the market and, and see all the opportunities that were in the past. Um, it's really not going to help at all. Uh, now, that, not, that might not be your thing or your, uh, one of the things that you bump into, that's fine. But that's certainly what I, you know, had in the past when looking at the market, looking at past movements. It really doesn't matter. Just focus on your tools, your indicators, your your plan, how you how you look at the market and how you make that analysis and how you translate it into into the trading plan. That's what it all boils down to. And another thing that happens often is recent history traders then bumping in or bouncing from one idea to another and letting very recent actions and, and consequences have influence on their current decisions. So for example, last time I used a tight stop loss. I'm not doing that anymore. I will, next time I'm doing this, right? And you always see that the opposite decision almost will be the better one, right? Not sticking through a series of, of decisions always letting the most recent thing, the most recent past influence um, impact the current events. And then you're just going to be bouncing back and forth and not really progressing. So very, very important. And um, that's why trading psychology is so important always. All right. Now, why is it wrong, first of all? Well, we've talked about the reward to risk. That is horrible. Anyhow, that's point one, very important. But also the odds of success of the trade are not really uh, you know, that great if you already had a, uh, let's say, a 30 pip move on a five minute chart and you've seen that move go up one candle, breaking another candle high or low after another. Well then, if you jump in at that time, there's a pretty good chance there's going to be some retracement. Right? Certain time frames move, of course, differently than others. A 30 pip move on a four-hour chart is nothing. One minute world, it's five minute world. It's really a lot. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good run already, right? So, yeah, that's the odds of success are definitely not in your favor. And of course, we're always trying to find a setup with good, uh, good odds and good reward to risk as much as possible, right? Um, the trading psychology will not cope with the development of the trade. We talked about that before already. The fact that the currency could go into consolidation or into flags or patterns and uh, that might uh, not suit well with the trading psychology. It will cause some doubt during the trade, but also of the trading capabilities, right? We want to trade trading and forex trading as a business, and if you're doing this, it's more like a game. Um, slow movements, in this case, the target will not get hit that quickly, while with fast movements, when we're jumping in, the chance of retracement is high. So that's why it's not optimal to do this, and that's why it's, that's what's wrong with it. Alrighty, so these are all the things that sum it up basically, money management, reward to risk, trading psychology, trading, treating trading as a business, and just also from a technical point of view, um, not reaching our target and better entries. Yeah, there are also many consequences, a lot of things that uh, will burn your account. And not just burn your account, they will uh, influence your psychology. And those consequences are usually burning out the profits. So burning out the whole amount of profits in a single day. 
burning out the equity, equity will go lower from month to month. That will lead to emotional disturbance used by over leveraging. That means that if you open a trade with a much more leverage than you should have opened, you will be disturbed. You won't be you won't be very calm. You need to trade with a lot size that you are comfortable with. That will then lead to depression caused by not just burning your profits. That is burning the equity. Uh, the next scale is losing the confidence in yourself and the system. And that is false, very false assumption. Because you're then if you do that, you're not trading your system or strategy. You're trading your psychology. Because there is no system and there is no trading strategy in the world that will let you chase the market. But you, you will not think about that. You will think that your system is not good, but your system may be very good, but you didn't respect the rules. You traded by your psychology. And you will lose the confidence in yourself and your system. That should never happen. Afterwards, you will fund the account. And you will again try to switch from a system to a system. Those are all consequences of chasing the market. Chasing the market will lead to a psychological trade called a loser. A loser. You will become a loser. You will not become a winner. You will not become a trader. You will become a loser. A complete, a devastated person who will not even have maybe the money to trade. And then it can lead, I know a trader that sold a house because he, he was successful and good trader and then he lost over three months everything and then he sold his house. And then you will become really a big time loser. So never ever do that. Always respect the market. Why we have chosen this uh, webinar today chasing the market because that happens and that happens for many many traders and we wanted to emphasize the point that you will never and don't ever do that you're good as your account is good after you have made your profits and after after you withdraw the money from your account that means that you are a good trader. Depression caused by burning the equity or losing the confidence in yourself will mark you psychologically. That is the thing you will always have to avoid. You can have a streak of losing trades, you can have a streak, a big streak of losing trades, but if they if they are managed correctly with a good my, my money management, well, that means that you are on a good way to become a good trader. Burning 50% of the account in a single day means that you need to start from scratch. And I, I think, Chris, that many traders have witnessed, have witnessed that over time. Definitely. What do you think? Yeah, th that is unfortunately, I think they, that it happens. The, the thing is that get a bit impatient and start to chase trades, try to regain their capital loss, and the thing spirals out of control in a way indeed. Unfortunately. is very unfortunate. But uh, fortunately, for all of us, there is a cure. There is a cure that we can take it and we can remedy ourselves from that kind of problem. That's called market plan and that is called the cure. You need always to use a stop loss. 
no matter what you got into trade, you have to have an exit plan if the market turns against you. Setting a stop loss and sticking to it will help you prevent a trade from wiping out your entire trading capital. Then, you need to use minimum leverage, minimal leverage. So, the more leverage you use, the more you stand to gain or lose or any given trade. Well, I need to say, 100 to 1 leverage is more than enough to give you quick short-term gains, but, you, but it's connected to your stop loss. If your stop loss is big, you don't go with 1 to 100 leverage, 100 to 1. You need to lower your leverage. Then, next thing is, don't risk more than 2 to 3 percent in a single trade. If that is your maximum loss you can trade, if you lose, stop trading for that day. Don't risk more than 2 to 3 percent in a single trade. I can say 2 percent if you are making a positional trade and you want to take that uh, one single trade in a day. Don't risk more because that risk will eventually lead you to, again, chase the market. Then, another thing is, don't chase the price. Don't chase the price. The forex market moves quickly. That means the currencies may momentarily shoot up as traders rush into a trades before returning to normal levels. Right? Let the price come to zones, trade in the zone. Go with your trade analysis. It has usually, and it has suggested you, to get in to better your chances of profiting from the trade. So wait for the price to come in the zone. If you don't know how to counter the trend, stick to a trend trading. Wait for a pullback, then go into a trade. That means that your stop losses would be lower. Then, let that is connected to, let the market come to you. Always, don't chase the shadow. Let the shadow stick with you. Let it come. And always, trade with a lot size that you are comfortable with. This is a mistake that a lot of traders can make, that they trade a lot size that they are not comfortable with. And that will dramatically affect their trading performance. If your lot size is too big, that will lead to an anxiety when you trade. You will close your trades too early, and you will be stop out of trades too soon. If your lot size is too small, the reverse happens. So you need to trade with a lot size that feels comfortable, but not too comfortable, because you won't make any profits. So, Try to find a middle in between and try to go with a trend trading and with, with always waiting for retracement. Even if the retracement doesn't happen in the next few days or few hours, wait, it will happen. So don't rush into a trade because it will give you to falsely trade short into support and long into resistance. And that is the thing you should always undertake, that will, that will be the cure for your psychology. This is the complete cure for chasing the shadow, chasing the market. And that is by my opinion. So you need to be very calm and very professional. Do you have anything to add, Chris? No, I, well, first of all, I, I think that the what I love about this is the let the market come to you, indeed. And I think I also mentioned it um, later on. Well, you still have a screenshot here, in fact. We can maybe go through before I share my... What I made, yeah. This is what usually happens. Let's, trade that we, let's say that we want to, to trade short and long, and we want to scalp into the market. This is the thing which, what, what will happen. Uh, first, you have gotten up too early and you maybe or too late, doesn't matter, the, the, the principle is the same. You will buy when the price has already reached the top. 
what will happen is the price will go down the first red line is let's say your stop loss you will be stopped out then again in the point of the arrow you will buy the top you will buy into this red line what will happen again you will not make any profits but the price will eventually turn violently against you that again will you you just think the market will go short and after this first red line you go short in the market but then the market suddenly changes okay you exit the trade but because market is ranging at the second at the second red line you will sell into the market you will sell into the market because you think okay the market is broken and this resistance it will go down this will this will hit for at least 10 pips but no 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 it won't hit the, the 10 pips sell into very support is a is a bad thing the market is eventually go up, up again and then again you think okay now it will go up i will i will reverse the trade you double your triple your position size of course the big candle went big what what will happen a range will happen the market will go up and then go down go up go down go up go down you buy sell buy sell buy sell and two and a half hours have passed and you have lost 12 percent of your account by risking two or three percent in a single trade you made five losses in a row risking two point something on your trade and you have lost at least 12 percent in your trading capital and that this can happen and this happens this is happening there is a trader saying that brings back painful memories yes and that can influence your psychology that can really influence your psychology you will become you will become depressed you will lose confidence you don't want to trade then next day you will trade you will make up for your trades but it doesn't go that way lower your leverage and try to build up your account slowly lower your leverage that is the cure lower your leverage and stick with your trading strategy if you are sure that your trading strategy works stick to it don't try to search for another strategy stick to your trading plan yeah absolutely and last but not least before we wrap it up um, some comments that I have mentioned here what I think is the best mindset when you're sitting behind the charts and uh, looking at the market so tip number one I would say is delete and try to forget the past potential what I already mentioned in, in, the, in the beginning or halfway. Now I don't say you know forget price action because we want to look at price action and remember the chart patterns and do a lot of screening time so that we you know build a base and foundation of a chart pattern recognition, which is very important and screening time is very important. But what I mean is the forget the emotional ties that you might have with past movements and uh, try to forget that aspect of it. So remember the the good stuff, remember the patterns, remember all what you need to learn from it, but then move on. And don't let the past haunt you or catch you up, right? Because that, that could influence certain decisions you make. Just forget it. Forget that part. Forget the emotions connected to it. Forget that ugly trade that you took there and there and you still see it on the chart. Then, next step, pre-plan the trade. If you don't have a plan, if you don't know where your stop loss should be, where your take profit is, what the trade management is, then it's not pre-planned, for, that's for sure, right? You want to have a clear guidance, an idea of what you do at any point in time, or not necessarily every second, but you want to have that plan ready in your mind or in paper or wherever. It has to be ready. If you don't have that and you just look at the, the chart and you had maybe a vague idea if it's go up, I, I want to buy somewhere, but you, you act on that, 
Nope, nope, nope. That's not that's not planning. Um, when in doubt, think of the train example. I already mentioned the train example earlier, but just to repeat it maybe quickly. Uh, if you're boarding, just remember that if you're trying to jump in an ongoing move without a plan or even with a plan, depending on your plan, but uh, in any case, just picture that passenger standing at the train station. And normally passengers get on when it's standing still. So that is very good advice. And in trading terms, that would be a confirmation trader, right? We want a confirmation that the train is standing still. So we wait for it to stand still. Um, a breakout trader would maybe wait for the train to move up to, let's say, 10, 20 kilometers, where it's still acceptable to jump on. It's a bit riskier, maybe. But if you know when to do it, at what speed, and circum certain circumstances, you can definitely jump on when the train has a bit of speed, uh, because you know it's, it's not going too fast, is it? So that would be a um, confirmation or breakout, right? The difference. But if you're just jumping in, then you're trying to catch uh, the train when it's going very fast. The fourth one is you're setting up kind of a trap for the market. A trap sounds negative. I didn't find a better word. Uh, it's Toronto also mentioned it, and I think it's very good thinking. It's basically that you're trying to see yourself as a hunter or a sniper in a way, right? Try to look at the market and say, okay, what? How can I see this market, and what would be a good way to approach it? Now, of course, you should have your trading strategies, I'm not saying, but I'm talking, you know, I'm talking about your strategy as well. You're trying to find a way that um, you are not the one walking into a trap, let me say it this way, but you are the one who's waiting patiently with discipline for the correct market structure that fits your trading plan. And you're constantly assessing whether that structure, that market structure, is in line with that. If it isn't, you have all the rights in the world and actually you should not enter it, right? Otherwise you're just entering for entering sakes. Very, very important. You have to let the market structure set up and have the patience and discipline for, to wait for that. It's not easy, but it will really help. Because what you're trying to do in that case is the success of your day, your trading day, would then not be defined by the profit or loss, but how successfully you think you implemented your trading strategy and plan. So even if you theoretically made a profit, but you look back and say, you know, I actually took a trade that didn't, the market structure didn't fit my trading strategy, so I shouldn't have taken that trade. So you would actually condemn that instead of, you know, being happy with the profit. That's actually where we should be working at because Otherwise, you, you want to reduce the thinking and you want to increase your ability of following your plan as, as good as you can. All right, so that's the definition of success, the correct implementation of your trading plan. And thereby, you also focus less on what you think might happen. What we're trying to make is a, a, a trading plan, a road map, right? We're trying to get from A to B. So when we look at our map and we're in the car, we're trying to get to our target as fast as possible. We don't think what the, be the best you know, road might be or what the, rest, the best direction might be or the, the best shortest route may be. No, we look at the GPS or at our map. So that's what we're doing as well with trading. We're looking at the map and the map, and the map is telling us what the best trade is for our strategy. So you know, it's no guessing here. So that's what I think would be the best solutions for avoiding chasing the market. Well, that wraps it up, I guess, with uh, our Chasing the Market webinar. Thank you, first of all, for your attention and being here. Are there any questions, maybe one or two or three, and then uh, we'll wrap it up. Now, as always, don't forget we have next week a week of webinars again. Toronto will be back, in fact, on Monday already. And if you want to sign up, go to Education, click on Webinars. 
and then uh, we'll be talking about these topics as you can see next week we'll talk about top 20 worst mistakes to avoid in trading forex well I don't know if there will be 20 maybe we'll have 18 we'll see <laughs> we just chose a number but I'm sure we can come up to 20 um, I think that we are not allowed to send uh, PowerPoint presentations. You can uh, watch this webinar uh, later because it's being uh, recorded and it will be uploaded. So we are, I'm, I'm afraid we cannot send you the PowerPoint presentation. Oh, we can't? Because, I, well, in that, in that case, you're lucky, Pasu Patalo, because I already sent it. <laughs> oh, okay, no I problem. Because I, ago, don't, I don't know if we are allowed. I need to check that with other market marketing, other yeah. market marketing department. I'm not sure. If you if can, it's okay, but I know that this webinar is being recorded, so I'm sure that you can watch it later. Are there any other questions, guys? Well, I guess not. I think that this is all clear because you know yourself and your psychology. So I think that, I think that we can wrap it up today. Uh, well, thank you for attending our webinar. Don't forget to like us on Admiral Markets uh, Facebook. Don't forget to read our analysis and uh, to attend our webinars and live trading with Chris. So, thank you guys. This is, we will call it a day. And uh, just be very, very, very calm and very resourceful and comfortable when you trade. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, indeed. Thank you for uh, the all the link. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, can you, this is the link. Uh, there is, this is a guy oh, yeah. who is asking for a link. This is the link, adoramarkets.com education webinars. And then go to video archive. Video archive, yeah. Here they are, all of them from the past as well, all of, all of the webinars this year. and. Um, You can view exactly. that at any time. The trading camp, you, if you want to join, uh, I think that you need to send an email with your motivation, how you see yourself a year from now as a Forex trader, to Michal, and then they'll give you an answer, uh, and it starts on Monday. So I think that the email would have to be sent on f tomorrow at the, the latest then. That's the, uh, the trading camp there. Alrighty. So, yeah, once again, thank you and see you next week. Wish you a good weekend in the meantime. Cheers, everyone. Yeah. Cheers, everyone. Bye bye.